Hello everybody and welcome to the most exciting video that I filmed in a long time, which is the sketchbook tour. Last sketchbook tour I did was a sketchbook that took me about 10 years to complete. I wasn't too serious about art at that time. It's quite an interesting video still because you can really see a good progression of my art and of my skills and style. So if you want to see it, I'm going to put it right there so you can have a look. But this one, it took me about a year to finish. So I'm going to tour it for you right now. We're going to go through all the pages. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about what I did. Before we start though, I think we can leave a like right now. I think I deserved it. I finished the whole sketchbook. So you can leave a like now <laughs> and um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I think you will like what you're going to see if I do say so myself. <laughs> so this is a page that I did at the very end. At first, I'd skip this first page on both sides because I was quite intimidated with starting a sketchbook. So I decided I would start on the second page. And at the end, I realized that I still had this page that was left blank. So I went back and I created some art on there. In fact, this page goes in, it goes in this direction. And it's an abstract art that I created following a Skillshare class. So in this class, we I'm going to link it below. I don't remember the artist, but in this class, we used pictures and we zoomed in a lot and we tried to recreate it. So this was a picture of some rocks, I think, or something like that, but really, really zoomed in. And what I like in this painting is that first I didn't put any tape, any borders. And I painted the first layer and then I put a border. So you can really see that there's a colored border around my painting, which I really like. And I think I might try to play with that a little bit more in the future. I use watercolors for this painting. The second page also goes in this direction. It's also an abstract painting, also based on a Skillshare class, another one. And for this one, I use watercolors as well and I played again with the same type of border but this time I didn't it wasn't as much of a success as it was on the first page but that's okay I chose some colors that I thought would be pretty together and I also played with some mark making at the end I did some mark makings there 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 well in a lot of places and also at the end, I used some colored pencils and my Neo Color 2s because some of them were like the perfect color for this. So I had some fun with my art supplies. Then we go to the 100 head challenge. So this is the first painting that I did in this sketchbook. At this time, I was still completing the 100 head challenge. Also, I remember that with this painting, it was the first time that I used my Himimiya gouache. So I started with a portrait and I remember that this one was so hard to do. I worked on her face over and over and over again and it was a struggle. In the end, I quite like this painting. I'm sure that if I had to redo it again, it would look completely different, but it was my first time using Himimiya gouache. So I remember that I did so much research before doing this painting. I watched hours and hours of videos to know how to use gouache because it's not like really gouache, it's normal gouache. So it reactivates once you put another wet layer on top. So it's, it's tricky. And when you, you're not used to gouache, then yeah, it can be hard. <laughs> then we have two more portraits. I used watercolors for this one. I remember that I was inspired by Arlisha from the Ari Bean channel because I love how she does her portraits. They're so loose and she doesn't focus on the details too much in general. So that's what I tried doing. But then again, it was so hard to do because trying to loosen up, especially in a portrait, was extra difficult. But I think I did quite a good job in the eyes area. Um, but that's it pretty much. I still had fun. 
it kind of showed me that you can be not so literal. You know that these are eyes, but they're not explicit. Like, they're not super detailed. That's what I mean. So I had fun with this. Then I decided I would be brave and I decided I would try gouache again in a portrait. And this time around, I realized that I had to be careful with gouache and the way that I had to mix my colors well before putting them on paper. So that's what I did. I spent more time mixing on my palette than painting really. And the colors are so much better. So I like this one a lot better than this one. And this painting, she looks sick, you know, she has a blue undertone in her face and I don't think that this was there in the reference picture. So in this one, she looks way more healthier. So that's a win. It gave me a bit more hope in gouache because after this first painting, I thought maybe gouache wasn't for me at all. Gouache was too difficult and I couldn't do it, but no, I could. I just needed to practice more. Then we still have some more portraits. I did these three using watercolors. I don't remember if there was anything specific about them. I created a composition that I thought would be pretty and that's pretty much it. For this one, I tried mixed media. So the base layer is made using watercolors and at the end I used some gold acrylics to create the, like the jewelry and her eye makeup. So that was fun. More portraits. This one is one of my favorites. I used inks for this one. I think I use only like two or three colors with some white ink to create some highlights, but that's it. So I really like the monochromatic look for this one. And with these, I used my Prismacolor colored pencils and I used some inks to do the, the background. And I used my colored pencils to create the details on top of the ink. I remember that it was my first time, I think, doing a whole drawing using my colored pencils. These were new. Before this, I had an old set of colored pencils that were given to me a long, long time ago. And it's during this drawing that I really realized the difference between the two sets. I like this one so much better. And I got rid of the other set while I gave it away. To be honest, I'm kind of sick of portraits now. <laughs> I did a hundred of them and that's enough for me for now. At first, this was supposed to be only um, a base sketch. So I used my colored pencils to create it, but I liked it so much. I liked the color and I liked the fact that you can see a little bit of the painting from the other side. It led through a little bit, but on her eye and cheek area. So I like it so much. I didn't want to cover it up. So I just decided to leave it as is and it's another portrait done for me. This is the page that I like the least in my whole sketchbook, I think. These are two portraits that did not inspire me too much. Um, although this one was still a challenge to paint because of the angle of her face and all the little details in her dress and like the fact that her hand is kind of hidden in her body. It was quite hard to paint, but still, I, I don't know. I didn't really like this one and this one was okay. It's just, I think I'm not too inspired by clowns or like circus ladies. I put them on one page and call it a day. This one is a cute little lady, still a bit circusy, or at least she's wearing a big costume. I was not too inspired by this one also, but I like the um, intricacy of her costume. I liked all the, the little folds of her dress. So I thought this was interesting, but I think that my colors are too green and you know, it's not the desired effect that I was looking for, but that's okay. But then if I remember correctly, this one is the last portrait from the 100 head challenge. I was so glad it was done and I reserved a whole page for this beautiful man. 
And what I'm the most proud of is that I use my gouache again. This is the portrait that was the easiest for me to realize using the gouache. And I think that this time, the thing that I did different is that I started with the dark zone. So I started with the background, everything that was black, I started with that first and then I did the rest. I'm not sure it's the advised order of doing things, starting with the darkest and going to the lightest, but I don't know, that's what I did for this one. And it works super well. I'm in love with this portrait. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And it's like the best way to finish this challenge. So I'm very pleased with this. Then we move on to other stuff. Yay. <laughs> I think we were in October at this point and I decided that I would do kind of Inktober, but not really. So I took the prompt from Magtober from Max Monroe. I'm going to link her Instagram below because her work is amazing. And I just decided to create the spreads that were inspiring to me. I knew that I wouldn't be able to create 31 spreads for 31 days. That's just not realistic with my schedule. So I decided that I would take some prompts here and there and create some art with it. And also I decided that it would be a good idea to do that in the future too. So just gather some old Inktober prompts or any other kind of prompts that I find on Instagram and create some art using the prompts. I find that sometimes you're not really inspired and just having a simple prompt just give you the little push that you needed to create some art. So I think this one was hands. So I just drew some hands and I like this page so much. It's so cute. And it was really good practice for me because hands are hard. <laughs> I think this one was bicycle. So what I did is I took a picture that I took during my vacation. In fact, I took two pictures. So the first picture was of this landscape here. And the second picture was in front of a shop. There were some pink bikes like this one. And I kind of combined the two to create this image. I used gouache, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Gouache and maybe a little bit of watercolors. I don't remember too well. But yeah, that was fun. Then this one I think was tattoo. This spread is made using gouache. In my head, this image was so pretty. I created a sketch of it and it was nice. And then when it came the time to put it on paper, I did not create a sketch. I just painted right away. And also I did not use any reference for this image. I think this one is my least favorite so far in this whole sketchbook because it's missing something. But then I think this spread, the theme was boxes. So I, use a picture of a box full of packages. I really wanted to practice a looser style again. It's something that at this point I was aiming towards. I really wanted to be looser in my art, but I didn't really know how to do it. And I didn't really do it. I wasn't able to. So this is something that I had to consciously practice. So this is what I did here and I love the results so much. I think at this point something unlocked in me and after that it was easier for me to paint looser. I'm sorry if the lighting changes a little bit during this video. It's, um, it's a bit cloudy outside so sometimes there's a lot of sun and sometimes not too much so I hope it's not a problem for you. Then I think this one, uh, what was the prompt? I don't really remember what the prompt is. Maybe it was mug. I did not use any reference for it and I like it so much. I like that I used a small portion of the page to create it. I think it just, it looks like a window in someone's house or something like that. And I like that I was able to be a bit loose in some areas. I used some inks some gouache i think and some color pencils i think that's it i remember that i was feeling like i didn't have all the colors that i would have liked in my inks i have a limited color range so i wasn't able to create all the color variations that i would have liked 
but I love this composition. I use my colored pencils on top to create some details, some more texture, and I love it. Then I put this page here because for this one, I use my oil pastels. And even if I seal this page, I'm kind of a little bit scared that the oil pastel transferred to this page. So I just put a page in between. What did I use for this? I use, I know I didn't have a spray for this at this point. I think I used some um, acrylic varnish or something and I can kind of see some bubbles in there. So it's not the best. <laughs> yep, not the best result. This was based on a picture that I took in vacation as well. I tried a couple of different techniques with my oil pastels. I don't have the biggest color range for these as well. So it's kind of a problem because I find it difficult to mix colors using oil pastels. So all my oil pastels drawings kind of look similar because they're the same colors. I think I have about 10 colors, so it's not a lot. But um, before doing this painting, I watched a video on a couple of techniques. So I used some, I don't remember what they're called, but I used some scratching techniques to create some texture. I used my solvent to mix a little bit of the colors together. I mixed the colors with my finger. I don't remember what the prompt was for this one. Oh, I like this spread. I think the prompt for this one was just like Google Maps or something. So you use Google Maps to find a something you would like to draw. So I decided I would find a house in the countryside. And I used my ink pens to do the sketch. And then after I used watercolors on top. And I used some salt in the grass to create some texture. And for this page, I think that the prompt was monochromatic. So I decided that I would do a value study. I took two pictures that I took during my vacation. I just focus on values and I love it so much. You know, focusing on values is such a different exercise than just painting with colors. You really focus on something different and you learn a lot. So yeah very pleased with these and I'm happy that I put two paintings on one page. The thing that was especially good with this is that when one was drying I could work on the other and just switch between the two and also I could use the same color so I started with the palest colors first so I mixed a pale color I did the sky and the water here and then the sky here and then some areas there and then I could mix a darker color, work on this first one and then the second one and just alternate between the two. So I could paint more, spend less time waiting. Then I think this one, I don't know, this was a prompt too, but I don't remember which one. So this is my cat. He was sitting on the keyboard in the office and I thought he was very cute. So I drew this picture of him. This was another prompt. The prompt was imitate someone else's style. I imitated Lisa Jordan's style. I will link her Instagram below. She's an abstract artist and she uses a lot of florals and a lot of delicate colors and layering and mixed media in her art. So I decided I would try to recreate her style. It was a lot of fun. And I remember that during this painting at some point, I was kind of panicked because I hated it <laughs> as you do in pretty much every painting during the ugly painting stage. But then I continued working and I arrived at this stage which I'm feeling neutral about it, but this is the start of something. This is where I discovered a bit more layering, a bit more mixed media and also mark making. So for this one, I use watercolors for the first layer the first few layers, I should say. And then I used acrylics to create some lines and some thin washes on top. And it's an okay painting. Then we're finished with the prompts. This is when I started doing some Skillshare classes. I remember at this point, it was the holidays and I was visiting my family. 
So I did a Skillshare class about how to create flowers. So I did a couple of spreads. I did these two. This is my favorite between the two of them. Then I did these, which are okay. And then these, I like this one. I like how the watercolor bleeds with all the different colors. Oh, these are all made using watercolors, by the way. And then I did these. I think this one was a final project. So for this one, you had to incorporate a couple of the flowers that you learned how to create in one painting. So all of these so far were like guided, guided paintings. And then for this one, you had to combine everything you learned to create your own artwork. So this is what I did. Then I did another Skillshare class that was about how to create a greenhouse landscape using watercolors and gouache. And for this one, I used some pictures that I took in the Montreal greenhouse last time I visited. So I recreated some of the plants that were found there. And I used watercolors for the first layer and then I put gouache on top. So that was really fun. All the Skillshare classes that I followed, I will link below so you can go follow them. And by the way, if you want a free Skillshare month, you can also do that following one of the links that are in my description. It's in the top part of the description in the links section. I also created my own Skillshare class about how to create an abstract watercolor painting. So if you want to do that, it would be so much fun. Please go ahead and do it. But don't hesitate to get the free month because you can discover a lot of different super interesting classes. I personally have learned a lot of techniques that I now incorporate into my art. And also when you're not too inspired, but you know you want to paint or you, you know you want to draw, then I find that Skillshare is the best place to go because you don't have to find an original idea. You just follow the class, do as you're told and have fun. So. I created this painting using, well, following the class, but then I was inspired. I wanted to do more. So I recreated two other pictures that I took in the Montreal greenhouse. For this one, I used acrylic markers that I got for Christmas. So I think it was one of the first times that I used my acrylic markers and I decided to use a limited color palette, which I put here. And I think it's so cute. I've always wanted to do this kind of like color swatch in my sketchbook. And then I also created this one using, I think for this one, I only used gouache. I'm pretty sure that it's during this painting that I kind of discovered transparency with gouache. Then for this spread, I asked my followers on Instagram what they wanted me to draw. And I spent a couple of hours drawing. It was a lot of fun. I'm not the biggest fan of this page, but I still had some fun. I like this one though. Yeah. Oh, then these. These I love so much. They were created following a Skillshare class again, in which we created these landscapes using gouache. But first we did a value study of the landscapes on the side, and then we created the landscapes. And it was super interesting because doing this exercise first really made you focus on values when you were at this stage here. I find that the result is so much better because you already know where your darkest parts will be, where your lightest parts would be. So you are careful where you put your color and you get a better result. So I did this first one and then this one. I think maybe this one is not dark enough. You can see that in my value study, I'm supposed to have a darker part right here. And in the background, it's not that much darker than in this part here. So I can see that I made a mistake. Then this exercise was so much fun that I decided to do another one using other pictures that I took, I think on Pinterest. I did the value study on this side and I painted the picture on that side. So I did two using gouache again. And I really liked the fact that I could paint just the bases of the trees. I didn't have to paint the whole tree, 
which is something I would have done before. I would have said, well, if I paint a tree, then I'm going to paint the whole tree. I wouldn't have asked myself the question or I wouldn't have allowed myself to paint only one part of the tree. But since that's what I did in the Skillshare class, like here, I kind of discovered that it was allowed. You know, in art, everything is allowed, but sometimes if you don't think about it, you just don't do it. Then I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I painted a pigeon? <laughs> we have lots of pigeons in Montreal. And one day I was walking in the street and I saw a couple of pigeons and I realized that they're very pretty. We just don't think of them as pretty because they're everywhere and they eat crap, <laughs> but they're super pretty. They have this like glowing purple shades on their necks and they have some green and some of them are super light. Some of them have very, a lot of contrast in their feathers. And so they're very pretty and they're all super different from one another. They have these bright orange feet. So they're very cute. So I got a couple of pictures on the internet as reference and I painted these pigeons using gouache and then I completed this page drawing a photos that I have in my art room and a random flower. So I like this page very much. It is very cute. Then I followed another Skillshare class in which we created abstract landscapes. I kind of rekindled with black in watercolors. This is not a color that I use usually and um, I did with this painting and I had lots of fun and I realized that you can do whatever you like once again. So <laughs> I can use black if I want to. I also used colors that I never used before such as copper and bright pink but in little amounts so it's not too much in your face. It just enhances certain parts of the painting and I discovered that I could use these colors as such because before I just never used them because I only saw them as bright pink or copper. Now I see them as a way to add a touch of color in some areas and not like as a, a main part of a painting. Then this is where everything changes. <laughs> I first did this one. I followed another Skillshare class. I think it is still the abstract landscape class. I'm not sure, maybe it's from the same artist. This is where I discovered the use of plastic wrap in watercolors. So what she made us do, it was just an exercise before doing the final painting, which I never did. I just stopped there <laughs> because my mind was blown. <laughs> So we put some colors. So I put some red in the middle and then another color on both sides. I think this one is dusk yellow. And then you just put a piece of plastic wrap on top, let it do its thing, remove it once it's dried. And then it did some beautiful textures. And then after I did some mark making using a white pen. So you can see it's very pretty. And then while it was drying, I decided to do the same thing with different colors. So if you've seen my abstract watercolors that I've been doing recently, this is where it all started. This is what gave me the idea. This is what made me want to practice with this technique, to explore with this technique more. I also did a Skillshare class on how to create this kind of abstract painting that I've been creating lately. So if you wanna do that, then once again, you can go um, in the description below and get a link to my class and a free month. Here I decided to do the same thing, but this time using inks because I wanted to see what the difference would be between the two. And I really like it better with watercolors because watercolors granulate and not inks. So I feel like it's an even better effect once there's granulation. It still was interesting, but meh. But for this one, I used some white ink. And this is something that I use now in my painting. So I put the base layer in watercolors and then I put some drops of white ink and then I put the plastic. So still so doing this, I learned something. Another drawing using oil pastels. Still the same colors as my first drawing, 
because as I told you, I have a very limited color range. I think it's just a picture that I took on Instagram, no, on Pinterest, and it's okay. These two I did using gouache. I think that these both were pictures that I found on Instagram. I know this one was a prompt. There's an artist that does these kind of paintings based on a picture. So she posts her paintings and the reference picture and she asks people to do their own versions and post them on Instagram and tag her in their posts. So I used her picture for this one and this one I'm not sure if I used her picture or if I used a random picture that I found. But I know that I played a lot with transparency and gouache. So in the background, you can see that we can see a little bit of the layer. So I diluted my gouache with a lot of water. So it's not too opaque. So you can see some layers. You know, that's what I used to create these effects of like folds and shadow parts in the, the cloth. And I did the same thing here for the background and the table and the flowers. So I really like the transparency of gouache. I think it adds a lot more dimension. You can see that I was really into flowers at this point. <laughs> this is a drawing that I did using my colored pencils. It's based on pictures that I took when I went to an art show. The space was super pretty. So I kind of mixed a lot of pictures together to create this drawing. So this was a vase that was made by an artist. The artist was selling a, a bunch of vases looking like this. I remember there was a flower bouquet that looks like this. So I kind of merged the two together. I put the flowers in this vase and it was on a pillar like this, but I don't think it was a checkered pillar. You know, so I kind of created my own little world and it was a lot of fun. And I like the fact that I left some space blank because you can really focus on the subject. Then at some point, I remember that I had lots of magazines. I wanted to get rid of them because there were too many of them and I had no use for them, but I cut some pictures that I liked and I just put them away. And at some point I found these pictures again and I decided that they would be super nice as reference for paintings. So I painted this one here. I remember that this was during the time where I was swatching all of my watercolors. So I did not want to waste my watercolors that were left in my palette. So I used them to create this painting. So it was so much fun. I used my masking fluid to mask the bubbles and yeah, very happy with this one. Then I was inspired by flowers. So I drew some lilies using my black ink pen. I wanted my drawing to be a bit more stylized, a bit more on the sketch side. So that's what I tried to do. And I like them very much. Then, oh, I remember this one. This is a painting that I created. I think it was like 3 a.m. I was watching a YouTube video. I think the video was like a meditative art making session and she was encouraging us to do the same thing at, at the same time. I was so relaxed and I created this kind of flower arrangement or flower feel or something from my head. I had no reference whatsoever and I really played with the colors and I had lots of fun and you can really see that I created this during the nighttime because all the colors are very dark and yeah, it looks like a flower field at night. I like these. More flowers. This is a painting that I created using a reference picture from Instagram from a photographer that I follow. She creates these beautiful still life pictures and not just still life, she's just an amazing photographer all around. And I saw this picture and I was blown away by the colors, the composition, the moodiness of this photo. So I decided that I had to paint it. And I used somewhat of a limited color palette. I love the green, bluish green colors from the background and uh, the contrast with the pink and the yellow. So I had lots of fun and her photo is quite grainy. So I really tried to use granulating watercolors to recreate that effect. 
So I liked it very much. I posted it on Instagram and I tagged the photographer and she was happy with it. So I'm super glad. Then the other side of this page, there's this portrait that I decided to recreate right here. The challenge with this one is that her features are not too well defined because of the lighting. So I tried to recreate that effect. I would say it was somewhat of a success. Difficult to paint, but fun. Yeah. Then this, oh, this is my favorite spread ever. First, I created this self-portrait. This was during another Skillshare class in which we created our own self-portrait using watercolors. I know I did the first layer with watercolors and then I added some details using gouache. I did the background using gouache. I took a couple of pictures of myself and I'm super happy about the result. I think it represents me well. This is my um, hairdo that I wear most of the time. This is a shirt that I have, but it's a different color, but I felt funky at that time. So I decided I would do a blue leopard print. The shirt that I have is just pink, but I decided to spice it up a little bit. In the angle that I shot the picture, my hand was a lot closer to the camera, so it appeared bigger, but I really exaggerated it. So it would be super huge. I feel like this represents me well because I use my hands a lot at work. And also because of my art, I use my hands a lot. So I feel like I wanted my hands to be super big and be like very important in this image. Also, I like my hands. So here we go. This is me with my gold earrings, my nose ring and my hoops. So that's me. During this painting, I did some swatches on this side. I thought it would be pretty to have like a page full of swatches, but turns out that there was only a small part of the page that was full of swatches and then there was a lot of blank space left and it wasn't pretty at all. So I decided I would cover this side using acrylics. And it's the first time I think in my sketchbook that I've used acrylics for a whole painting. For a while, acrylics was one of my least favorite mediums. And that's because I really didn't like the style I was painting in. It was too tight and it was drying too fast. Yeah, so I really didn't like it. But I have lots of acrylic paints that I just didn't use. I discovered retardant medium and it changed my life. So I use this a lot now to make my paint dry slower. So I have more time to mix and it's so much better. So now I, I'm in love with painting with acrylics. It's so much fun. So I painted this landscape. This is based on a picture that I took while I was in vacation. I had so much fun. And as you can see, this is a house and this part of the house, it's not very well defined, but you can still see that it's a house. You can still understand its shape. So this is what I meant when I say that you don't have to be so literal about things. You don't have to like explain to the viewer exactly like, oh, this is a corner. This is not the corner. This is a tree. You can make things merge together a little bit, but the eye understands. So then I did some mark makings and I also made sure to preserve a little bit of the transparency. I did an under layer that was like turquoise blue. So you can still see some of it in the sky, which is something that I really like to do. So let me show you a little bit of a close up. See, it's in this part that I'm saying that all the angles and um, everything is not too well defined and that's okay. You don't need that. And see the transparency in the sky? I like it very much. And the mark makings. So this is a spread that I like so much because I feel like the colors go well together and you can still see the transparency in this part here in the background. First I did an under, well first the background was like this mustard yellow but I didn't like it too much so I added a dark grayish green on top but I diluted it a lot so it, it was a bit transparent. Love it. Love, love, love. Then I got inspired by Sandy Hester. I think that it's at this point I discovered her YouTube channel which is like my favorite YouTube channel ever. You have to go watch her. I'm going to try to remember to link her in description. 
she's a sweetheart. She's what I want to become when I get older. I want to keep her enthusiasm for art. I want to keep playing. I want to keep exploring. So I really look up to her and I love her style also. I, I love how she explores, how she plays. I keep going back in time to watch her old vlogs because they're feel-good vlogs. I love them. So what she does is that she, while she uses a lot of pastels, I'm not sure if she uses oil pastels or normal pastels, I'm not too sure, but I decided I would try to do a loose sketch using my oil pastels. This is a picture that I took a long time ago. So I decided I would do a first sketch using oil pastels and I didn't like it very much because my color range was too limited. I'm not a fan of these colors. Yeah. And on this side, I decided to do the same thing. What Sandy does is that oftentimes she uses her inks. I think normally it's acrylic inks and she mixes them directly on the paper. So she just puts them on the paper. She uses a brush and then she mixes and then she's very loose and she plays a lot. So this is what I decided to do with my inks. And I like this side much better than this side. But then again, I don't have a big range of inks, so I'm not a big fan of these colors, but I like these better than these. When I get more inks, then I think that I can do something that's more in my style color-wise, but I like this exercise. And then I think I used some... No, I didn't use any gouache for these, only inks. Then, almost at the end, this is a little bit inspired by Sandy as well. She does a lot of plein air drawings and paintings. So at some point I decided to go to a park near my house and just draw some scenes. I focused on some areas of the park and I drew these using my colored pencils. And I, I wasn't too literal about stuff. So sometimes there was like a garbage bin or there were some people or there was like a basketball court. I just didn't draw them. I drew only what I wanted to draw. So I drew some scenes from the park and the next day I painted this painting using acrylics. It's based on this sketch right here. It was kind of during sunset so I tried to recreate that effect and I like the result very much. I like how dark and moody the colors are and you can see that my underpainting was like a bright red and you can see it peek through in some areas like here or here. I like it very much. And I like how textured my acrylic is. Yeah, so much fun. So I also like the, um, the way that I created this landscape. I did not draw the top of the trees. This is something that I learned I could do. I like it very much. And I like that it's kind of like a um, nine by 16 ratio, like a movie a little bit. So, a beautiful rectangle. Love it. Then I did another Skillshare class. I wanted to find a class in which I would practice some techniques that I could incorporate in my art. So I found this class in which we did these landscapes using a lot of wet on wet watercolor techniques. It's a little bit abstract, but not too much. So I had lots of fun and I really played around with values. So I made sure to preserve some light areas and some dark areas to make the viewer understand that we're looking at a little trail in the forest. It's a very sunny day, but it's still like a, a shaded area. So it's it was a lot of fun. Then I painted my cat again, my son using acrylics. I really wanted to use like funky colors. I like it so much and surprisingly it did not take very long to complete. So another page done. Love it. And last page. I decided to create my own still life. So I gathered some stuff that I had laying around my house and I created this composition. I like it so much. And I kind of, I was inspired by Sandy as well because she does a lot of still lives and I try to keep my style loose and yeah, I just love it so much. And as Sandy does, sometimes she, she creates her composition, but she changes 
things up in her painting. So that's what I did too. I didn't follow the composition exactly to create this. And I wrote the date of this painting, um, the date of the last page of this sketchbook, which was July 14, 2022. So that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I would love to see you again soon. I try to post art videos as often as I can. I aim for once a week, but yeah, that's not always what happens. Tell me which painting or which spread was your favorite. I would love to know. All right, now we'll do a little flip through and I will see you soon. Take care.